All right, you guys. We're here uh, at the Country Squire, and we are going to learn how to pack a pipe using flake tobacco. We have a couple of guest people here, Henchos. He's just going to hang out. We got Justin, and there's John David, and there is Kim, the owner of the shop. Hey. hey. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to learn how to do it. So today we're going to do uh, uh, flake tobacco, and we actually, last video you'll notice that uh, we had a tin of capstan yellow label here, and we promised you that we were going to come back and actually smoke uh, smoke that to show you how to how to fold and, and stuff and, uh, and light uh, flake tobacco. Um, the problem is that all that was smoked by our lovely friends here at the shop, and so it's gone. <laughs> So we now are going to uh, substitute today uh, Orlick Golden Slice, which is one of my very favorite tobaccos. We've got the uh, 50 gram tin here, which is great. Um, if you're not familiar with Orlick, it's definitely worth trying sometime. Um, it's got this little little judge dude from Britain with this little, uh, this little wig on there. And if you can, I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but it, if you can read, it says smoked by all shrewd judges. And um, that's just... That just makes me really happy. So, <laughs> anyway, but this is a great tobacco. It's one of my favorites. I have got a um, couple of flakes here, and I'm going to show you how to do the um, kind of tear apart method. Uh, so, because that's how I typically like to smoke flake tobacco. Some flakes um, I have a little more success with just folding and stuffing in my pipe, um, and then other flakes I, you know, have trouble with. But I actually asked my good friend Justin Griffin. Um, to come today and he's going to actually kind of demonstrate he tends to use the fold and stuff method more with flake tobacco than i do so he's going to um, demonstrate the way he does that and then we'll uh, kind of compare notes so anyway um i'm going to save this for justin and this is just a flake right here that i've got <clears throat> just about uh, half a flake but you know typically you'll see um on flake tobaccos people look at it and like how on earth do i smoke that um, and you know, it's pressed into flakes for a variety of reasons, um, one of which is that it just stays fresh a really long time, and also the flavors marry together well. Um, but you don't have to smoke it like this, you can actually just uh, kind of crumble it up. And what I do is I take it in my hand, and I, you notice I'm over a sheet of paper here, and I just kind of roll it around in my hand until essentially the tobacco looks like ribbon cut. Um, and so you'll see what I've got there is basically something that you might find, you know, in maybe one of the jars behind me or something like that. So, and then I'll load my pipe with this. It's real easy. Um, but, you know, if you're new, newer to the tobacco world, you do kind of wonder, like, how on earth am I supposed to smoke that? It looks like beef jerky. <laughs> and, you know, so it's one of those things where you just kind of learn the trick of either, either tearing it apart like I just did or folding the tobacco in your pipe. And so what I'll do is I'll just take this and kind of dump it in like that, if my shaky hands will permit. <laughs> and there you go. So, um, and that's how I do that. Justin, would you like to demonstrate? Absolutely. Floating on your end. So first you have to resist the urge to eat this because it does look like beef jerky. <laughs> um, what? Part of the reason that I use the folded stuff method is that by and large I'm just not patient enough to tear it apart. Right. Um, the problem with the fold and stuff method will be the um, lighting of it. So what you want to do is make sure that you fold it so it will fit in the bowl of your pipe because if I hadn't folded it that way first, it wouldn't have. And then you can just fold it like this as it goes along and kind of see that fits perfectly it's like in a there. Perfect fit. Yeah. Wow. Um, we'll pretend that I did that on purpose. <laughs> um, and usually, one of the problems you run into that is one of the reasons a lot of people don't like the folding stuff method is that it leaves a lot of space in the tobacco, and so it's hard to get a good light on the tobacco. This looks like that's not going to be right. a problem be at the all there. because that's fairly well packed. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we'll see how how we do. Da, 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 da. 
That fit that bowl perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah, that was pretty That was cool. crazy. I intended that. Didn't you hear it? I did. No, I did. I did. It all made... We're, we're totally with you. It all made perfect sense. <laughs> and this lit perfectly. And hopefully we'll stay lit now. That's right. Um, you do have to be careful. You may have to relight a few times. Sometimes, like with any other tobacco, once you get a good ash at the top and can tamp it down, right. it'll stay better lit. So, no. oh, go ahead. So, why? So, does that method work even if there's a little bit of space? It does, but you're more likely to have to relight okay. the more space there is. Okay. Do you have? Do you have more success with flake tobacco in a in a pipe that has a larger bowl or, or a tall narrow bowl? What works best for you? I think a tall a tall bowl. It can be bigger, but the tall bowl definitely works better because, like you saw with that flake, once you fold it in half that right. first time, right, it goes in fairly well and fits fairly well. Right. Um, the big thing is getting it to where there's as little space as possible in there so that it does get that good light. And, then, and right. as you fold it, you will feel it start to come apart, which is okay. You just have to make sure it doesn't fall apart before you get it in the bowl. In the bowl, yeah. And I guess the beauty of folding it, even if it kind of tears apart some, is just that it makes it really easy to load your pipe that way. Right. You, know, you don't have to worry about kind of collecting all the scraps over this thing and you know, getting them in your pipe and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, for me, who am impatient sometimes, it's uh, easier to just do that, put it in, than have to sit there. Although there's something nice about sitting there and right. tearing it apart. And there, there is, I mean, there's kind of a process to it. Again, as you know, people would like pipe tobacco, like that's that's part of the fun, is the actual process of it. Wait, the process is part of the fun? It is. Oh. <laughs> 13 years of smoking the pipe. And you, learned something and you never knew that. So this is your first time to try oil at Golden Slice. What, okay. do you, what do you think about it? Well, let me get it lit good and stop talking for a minute. And I'll <laughs> yeah, that's always a problem. <clears throat> the pipe. What did uh, What do they call it? The adult male pacifier. Right. The passing. <laughs> or as my grandmother referred to it, a binky. Have you heard that? A binky. Yeah. I've heard that. It has yes. a very clean case. It's real clean. Yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. Orlick is a, um, it's one of my favorites. Of course, I'm kind of a sucker for Virginia tobacco, so um, this is just a really clean tobacco that has um, a little perique in it, uh, but for me, to be honest with you, it's hardly noticeable at all. And um, it's just got a crisp flavor. It's good summertime smoke. Um, it's one of those that, like, you know, I can work in the yard all day smoking Orlick, and it's like medicine for my heart. You know, it's, it's good stuff. I'm sorry that Tim disappeared. Oh, it did. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin, thanks for um, thanks for helping us out, man. Thank you. Thanks for watching, y'all.